Hey everybody, it's Zach again, NewTutor.com, coming in and making another fantastic video for you today. And so, um, you know, one of the common questions that often gets asked when someone discovers Torah and they realize that the Sabbath was never changed, or it was changed by Rome, or they realize that no one in the New Testament ever kept Christmas, they never kept Easter, instead they kept the feast days over and over again in the New Testament that's mentioned, and they realize that, you know, they never sat down and actually had a ham sandwich. You know, so they realize that the commandments the Father gave us, the law, he says, is perfect and converts the soul. Because it converts the soul, once you realize what sin is, you can turn from sin, thus being converted. I mean, they realize all these things, and they're like, yeah, you know, I got to tell others about this. And so they go out there and excitedly tell all of their friends and family, and their friends and family then tell them that they're nuts. And so... When they do, what part of the process of telling them that you're crazy is saying, hey, you know, if what you're saying is true, that we should be keeping these commandments because they bring, they bring blessings and curses, supposedly. Well, if what you're saying is true, well, how come all these thousands of years no one figured that out? Did you have you ever heard that? I heard that. That was like one of the most arguments that I heard. And I still hear it from people like you guys out there today who send me the emails because you've excitedly discovered this truth by going back to your Bible and just simply reading it for what it says. And you go out and tell others. And one of the arguments they give you most of the time is, well, if what you're saying is true, how come we've been doing this for thousands of years? No one else ever came up with this. How come this is so new? How come you, you figured this out, but people thousands of years before you never did all these hundreds of years, no one figured it out. Why is that? There are two reasons for that. That's a, that's a valid argument. It's a valid question. You know, how come you're, you know, people today, this is being promoted on the internet and all these other places. How come these people, they are just now figuring it out. But all these scholars, all these, you know, educated, you know, theologians never figured it out. Well, there's two answers to that. Two answers to that, why this is happening today, okay? We're going to get into it today. So the number one reason, we're going to go through two of them. The number one reason why this is just now happening today is because of literacy. Literacy. Simple. Most people throughout history have been illiterate. That's just a simple fact. Let's go ahead and take a look at some stats. So if you go to this um, website called Our World in Data, slash literacy, you have some amazing statistics that are given here. Number one, it goes, basically the best chart they have on their entire site here on this entire page goes all the way back to 1475. Do you want to know how many people were literate in Great Britain around 1475? You know, this is only 500 years ago, 500 years ago, only about, you know, 5% or less of the people of Great Britain were literate. They could read, okay? If you go back to France, another hub of Roman Catholicism, you know, it was like around 5% as well. 5% of the people just 500 years ago, only 5% could read. Everyone else was illiterate. And it just goes downhill from there. I mean, literacy, the ability to read has been on the upward trend Okay, since the beginning of time. Okay, and you go back, the further you go back, the lower that gets. The lower it gets. You never really see it actually go down and then go up and then go down. No, it just keeps going up. There's always an upward trend when it comes to literacy over time. So the farther you go back, the trend is downward. If it's 5% in the, you know, the two countries that are listed on this chart as being really the hubs of, I mean, Italy as well, obviously, I mean, Italy is on there too, but it all goes downtrend. If you think about France and Great Britain, if it's only 5%, I mean, Romans put, the Romans in Italy put a, a big emphasis on education. So it makes sense that it's going to be a little bit higher there, but not much. It's a downward trend. What do you think it was a thousand years ago? What do you think it was 1,500 years ago? It would have been less, I mean, what, 1% maybe? 2%? Guys, the biggest reason this hasn't been discovered until now is because just in the last 100 years, especially in the last 100 years, in the last 50 years even, literacy has gone off the charts. Off the charts. And so it only makes sense that as the, a people who are reading more, not just you know, in America, but worldwide, 
it's only really been in the last 100, 200 years that America has seen a large amount of its population being able to read as well. I mean, we're on par with the Netherlands and with Sweden and around the same time, you know, of the 18, you know, late 1800s. You know, we have some, we had amazing illiteracy in this country, just like the rest of the world. And the people who left Europe to really found the country uh, the United, that became the United States and much North America, North America were really a lot of the more educated people who lived in Europe, who wanted to get away from tyranny. They were the ones who had the money to leave to, and to escape the tyranny, to start a new nation. And so they were literate to begin with. But beyond that... You had still at least a good 20% of the population being the poor and middle class who couldn't read very well. And they couldn't possess, you know, things like written, the written word. Things that were printed were always very expensive. And so really the number one reason when it comes down to it of why are we just now discovering this? Why in the last few years are we discovering what's actually read in our Bible is because most people throughout history have been illiterate. For the last 2,000 years... The majority of that time, the majority of the people have been illiterate. They couldn't read. Now, that's answer number one. What about answer number two? The second reason why we're just now discovering Torah, we're going back to our Bibles, and we're reading it for what it says and discovering, you know what? God's commandments are forever. He says that they're perfect and they're forever. They, he says he changes not. And so when you start to put all that stuff together— you know, you start to figure out, well, we need to be keeping the commandments. We need to understand what sin is. Sin is transgression of the law. One of the reasons, the second reason we're finding all this out is because it was kept from us. Yes, the church lied to us. And I know that's not a very popular opinion, especially even amongst people in the Hebrew roots. We don't like to bash the church. And I'm not trying to bash the church. I'm just trying, I'm calling out a spade a spade. Did you know the decree of the Council of Toulouse said specifically, we prohibit also that the laity, that means average normal schmoes like you, that the laity should be permitted to have the books of the Old or New Testament, but we most strictly forbid their having any translation of these books. That means you can't have it. I mean, if you, if you need it spelled out for you, that's what it says. You're not allowed to have these books. You can't have it, especially in your language, translate it. The ruling of the Council of Tarragona said, No one may possess the books of the Old and New Testament in the Romance language. And if anyone possesses them, he must turn them over to the local bishop within eight days after the promulgation of this decree so that they may be burned. See, not only are you not allowed to have these books, but if you got them, you have to turn them over to a bishop and he's going to burn them. Because you're not supposed to have them. See, we want things in a language you can't understand. Latin. Okay, because most people are illiterate. We know you're illiterate. And you don't even know how to speak a language that's basically dead. You speak French or you speak, you know, English or German or whatever language you're, you speak. But we're going to all speak Latin. And we're going to tell you what these books say. But we're not going to let you read them for yourself. Because if you read them for yourself, you might figure out the truth. That what we're telling you is a bunch of crap. It's a bunch of lies. You know, you know we're, we're doing Christ Mass. Christ Mass. Well... I'm sorry, Bishop, Christ Mass isn't in my book. Where, where is it? You don't worry about that. In fact, give me your book. I'm going to burn it. You just do what I tell you to do. And if you don't, we're going to burn you too. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's crazy. The reason we haven't figured this out until now is because we weren't allowed to. We couldn't read, and the church told us not to. You couldn't have the books. If you're caught with the books, we're going to burn the books, and we're probably going to burn you too because you're probably a witch. Because they were protecting themselves. They were protecting their empire. And today, I know that's offensive. I know it hurts to hear the truth. But guys, the church lied to you. It lied to me. Not, not my local pastor that I knew growing up. He, didn't lie. he inherited these lies. See, that's why it says in Jeremiah, Our fathers inherited lies, vanity, and things wherein there is no profit. Because they didn't come up with the lie, but they inherited them. And then they passed them on. And so today we're coming out of that. Jeremiah is speaking of prophecy, a time when we would come out of these lies that were inherited because the church did not want us to know the truth. This is a really interesting quote from a um, college professor over who published an article um, over at Huffington Post. He says, while I was writing my book, 
Jesus Uncensored, Restoring the Authentic Jew, it became increasingly clear to me that there was another more potent motive for keeping the New Testament out of reach for Christians, to conceal the Jewish foundation of Christianity and Jesus' lifelong dedication to Judaism and Jewish practices. That's the reality. Now, I, I agree somewhat with, I disagree somewhat with that statement because over and over again, our Messiah continually railed against the traditions and doctrines of man, Jewish law, Jewish traditions. But God's law, he upheld over and over and over and over again. Continually, he goes back to Moses. He says, if you did not believe Moses and the prophets, neither will you be convinced by one raised from the dead. Because you have to believe in Moses. In fact, God says, if anyone comes after you who says something, who says to do something different than what you're telling them, you know it's a false prophet. And that's how you know Yeshua was real. Because he kept going back to Moses, back to Moses, back to Moses, and upholding the true essence of what Moses taught. Yeah, yeah you, you know, you can commit adultery by letter of the law. But if you even look at a woman with lust, you're committing adultery with her already in your heart. See, that's the true essence of the law. You know, he spoke Moses over and over again. And so the thing that the church was trying to do was cover up where these roots were. They were inventing holidays on their own. They were mixing in pagan practices of sun god and fertility worship with the practices of the church because they didn't want you doing Passover. They didn't want you doing the Feast of Tabernacles. They didn't want you to know what the Day of Trumpets was. They didn't want you to know what the Day of First Fruits was. No, no, no. See, those are Jewish things. We're going to do our own things now. We're going to change things. And so, folks, the main reason why people are discovering this today is because we have figured out what the lie is. We've gone back to the Bible that we have in our own language for the first time in history. Is this thing being mass produced and people are reading it for themselves and they're stop, they've stopped listening to the church. They've stopped listening to authority figures and realize there's only one authority and it's our Messiah. And they're going back and reading the words of God who sent the Torah made flesh to walk out perfectly as an example for us to follow. I've got one authority figure, one. I'm going to read about him in this book, the word of God. And so that's all you got to do. And people have realized that, and that's why people today. So the number one argument, or the really number two arguments that people are figuring this out for today, number one, literacy has increased tremendously so, education too. And then we figured out the church was lying to us. The church was lying to you. They lied to you and me. They, our fathers inherited the lies, and we're reading the Bible for ourselves. It's amazing. All right, there you go. We'll leave it at that. Go home. Read your Bible. Thanks.